Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. Amen. All right, he said green means go. I somewhere here a while back, and I turned that thing on, it was as red as John's coat. And I said, does this mean go? He said, yep, red means go. I said, not where I'm from. <laughs> Hello. Well, it's good to be at Liberty, Free Will Baptist Church. Amen. Thank you for having us, Preacher Tim, and inviting us to come. We've been excited about it ever since we were here last year. We were here last year on the first Sunday of the year on our way to Tampa, and, and uh, boy, we had a wonderful meeting. I never forgot it. And they were a bunch of folks saved. And Amen. Me for met. We're praying for that more this week. How Amen. about you? Amen. 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 Sounds like half of you are. I said, how about you? Amen. 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 Now, the quicker... The more you get with me, the more you ain't say amen, the faster I preach, and the quicker you get to go eat. What about one amen? Worried about eating. Amen. Have you have your Bibles with you, and you'd like to turn your Bible first chapter of the gospel according to Matthew, chapter one. If you're like me, you can see probably who the screen easier than you can your Bible. But I like my Bible, don't you? Amen. Amen. I like the book. Not a book, the book. Amen. Amen. This book will solve all problems. Amen. 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 And the thing it can't do for you. Amen. If you'll trust in it. We, we, we spend billions of dollars in America on books of, of different things trying to trying to do different things and, and, and the fact of it is this is the book that will get it all done Amen. Amen. and uh, if you need a good diet it's in this book Amen. truly it is everything's in this book and, and uh, uh, if you need salvation today it comes in the book Amen. because he is salvation Amen. All right, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. If you found your place, say amen. amen. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was in spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Boy, we ought to take a 10-minute recess right now. Run and shout it out. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Now that word right there actually means to kill her. Come on. Come on. Come on. It gets quiet when you start talking about death. Come on. That's what it actually meant. Because of the situation. But look at verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I like this verse. And she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save the people from their sins. Amen. Amen. The Lord would help me just for a couple hours this morning. I like to preach on who he is. Jesus. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your people. Thank you for this place. I thank you for your word, the Bible that you've left. I thank you, God, for the needs that you've already met. And Lord, I pray as I preach your word, you would speak to hearts, Lord, that they would receive the word, God, and it be planted in their soil and ground. God, that they would come forth and allow you to do what only you can do. God, we just ask you, Lord, now to use us for a little bit, Father. May we not say anything you wouldn't have us to say. But hide us in the cross. Uh, hide us in the Holy Ghost. Uh, Lord, you preach to the inside. I'll preach to the outside. Uh, speak to all souls, Lord. Uh, I'm not going to ask you, will you save them? Because I know you will. I ask that they would come and receive the greatest gift that they could ever have in this life. 
and that's salvation through your son Jesus. We love you and thank you and give you all praise in his name. Amen. Now look over at your neighbor and say you're looking as good as you can today. I'd like to preach on who is Jesus. It's one of the greatest questions of today's time, even as it was in the time when Jesus was here. Matter of fact, in 1994, in the month of December, Life Magazine put on the front page on the cover of their magazine the picture that we look at uh, and we look at it to be Jesus. Uh, they put it on the front page and the caption says this, Who was this man? Now the truth of the matter is they was wrong in their caption because he's not a what? He's not a, a was. He is Jesus. The world is trying to do everything they can to put down his name and put down his people. But can I tell you, greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. The Bible said on the Isle of Patmos, he was speaking to John. He said, I'm he who was and is and is to come. That's right. Just about a few things. Give me, I got seven points. Give me three minutes on each point and I'll be done. All right? Somebody wants to watch me. Amen. My wife will, I promise you. Here we go. Who is this Jesus? Number one, he is the sovereign son of God. Amen. When I was studying this and looking this out, just reading over it again, I have nothing new. It's as simple as the book is simple. Oh. He is the sovereign God. And God spoke to me and said this. Uh, he is the Son of God, but yet He's God the Son. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said, what's that mean? That means He's 100% man, but yet He was 100% God. Amen. John said he was in the beginning with God and was God and the same was there with God and without him there was nothing made. So he is the sovereign son of God. That means he controls everything. That means he's over all things. What do you mean? Well, number one, he's over disasters. They, they, they were there one day in a ship and Jesus had went into the back of the ship. He, his body had got a little weary and tired and he was taking a nap. And the Bible said a storm or a disaster or a hurricane came upon them. And those disciples done everything they could. And it looked like they were going down. And they said, does he not even care that we perish? And one of the disciples uh, went and woke up Jesus uh, and made that statement. Uh, Jesus did not uh, look at the disciple and say anything. Uh, but here's what he done. Uh, he walked out on the bow of that ship uh, and he spoke to the winds. Uh, and when he spoke to the winds, uh, they were commanded back to their caverns. Uh, and when the winds were commanded back to their caverns, uh, the waves laid at his feet. Uh, uh, like a whipped puppy. Uh, can I tell you something this morning? Uh, uh, he does care uh, about you, Lord. Uh, he cares so much uh, that He came and died uh, that you might have uh, eternal life. Uh, and not only is He sovereign over disasters, uh, He's sovereign over demons. Uh, uh, there was a man living in the tombs. Uh, he ran around naked. Uh, they couldn't control him. Uh, now in today's society, uh, they would say he's psychologically challenged. Uh, but the Bible said he was full uh, of demons. Uh, and when he met Jesus, oh, bless God. That shocked her if you're out my toes. I said when he saw 
and met Jesus, yes, the demons spoke to him. Said, why are you here? Why are you here? And don't, don't destroy us. Cast us into the swine. And he asked the man, what is your name? He said, Legion, for they are many. But can I tell you, he was looking into God the Son. And when he spoke to them demons, they ran into hogs. And can I tell you, even a hog's got enough sense not to be filled with devils. They run over the steep and drown themselves. Can I tell you something this morning? He is sovereign over the devil. He's sovereign over disease. A woman had an issue of blood for 12 long years. She spent everything she had. She was broke. She was then gone to the doctors. All the doctors will tell you to do. You walk in, they'll grab your billfold and say, cough. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Have you ever, I mean, you go there, you wait uh, uh, two hours after your appointment time, uh, uh, you walk into there, the nurse does all the work, uh, the doctor comes in and says, what's wrong? Uh, well, you tell me, you're the doctor. <laughs> Amen. But if you notice when you go in, uh, on the door, it'll say general practice. Uh, all they know is what you tell them. Uh, but can I tell you, oh, glory to God, uh, Jesus <laughs> about you. He knows where you live. He knows who you are. He's given you everything you've ever had. Whether you're saved or whether you're lost. In Him you live and move and have your being. I cannot tell you no man liveth to himself. No man died to himself. But gave whether you live or whether you die. We are the Lord's. And I tell you something. He's sovereign over disease. Amen. See these disease may Take our bodies, but they can't do nothing to our soul. Hold on, man. Woo! Preach on. Not only is he sovereign over disease, he's sovereign over distress. There's a lady comes to Jesus one day and she's begging for Jesus to touch and heal her daughter. And Jesus turns around and looks at her and says, ma'am, it is not meat to give bread unto the dogs. Now how would you have felt if you went before Jesus and he more or less said you're a dog? Well, you see, that's what we got to come to the place of. Not that we're dogs, but we need him Amen. more than we need anything else. Amen. And I believe she had came to that point. But it did not discourage her in her distress because she looked at Jesus and here's what she said. She said, Yea, Master, that is truth. But even the dogs, I said, Even the dogs, even the crumbs that falls from the Master's table. Hey, I got good news for you. That was before the cross. Can I tell you today, blessed God, you don't have to live on crumbs. You don't have to live on stale bread. He'll give you a new loaf every morning if you'll only come to Him. And He said, no greater faith have I found in Israel. And immediately her daughter was made whole. It don't take six months. It don't take six weeks. It don't take six hours. It don't take six minutes. It don't take six seconds. The Bible says the very moment uh, that you'll give him your whole heart, Woo, I'll be found with you. Uh, somebody ought to shout, I'm busy preaching. Uh, say, oh, I'm praying. No, no, not notice this. Uh, the first point is the longest one. Ain't you glad of that? Uh, he is not only uh, a sovereign over those things, uh, but he's sovereign over death. Uh, amen. Uh, he had healed that lady of the issue of blood uh, while on his way to Jarvis' house. Uh, I believe when he watched Jarvis, Jarvis watched uh, him heal that lady. I believe it encouraged him his faith. Uh, but notice now the devil's going to come against you. Uh, he's on his way to Jairus' house uh, and the men come and say, uh, uh, trouble not the master. Uh, your daughter is dead. Uh, and Jesus looks at him. Uh, I say, Brother John, he leaned on his shoulder and he whispered in his ear, don't believe it. She's not dead. She's Come just on. asleep. No, oh, you bring it to yeah. oh, Take me where she is. Right oh, I may not get to the second point. Yeah. If you're yeah. lost, you ought to come on and get saved and I'll stop preaching right now. I'm going to pray with you. It's preached to you. Oh, 
door when they get to the house. And they're mourning and they're singing those old sad songs. And the damsel is in the upper room. And then Jesus comes in and he looks around and says, She's just asleep. Bless God and they made fun of him. They mocked him. And he run them out. But notice what happened next. I'm telling you, he is sovereign over death. What do you mean, preacher? He looked at that little girl and he spoke to her and said, damsel, arise. Guess what? She didn't have no choice. Bless God. She didn't have no choice. come alive. Uh, bless God, you won't have no option. Uh, all of those saints, uh, we took that little earthly tabernacle uh, and laid it in the slot out yonder. Uh, one day the voice of God shall speak uh, and the trumpet of God shall sound. Uh, and they'll not have any choice. Uh, in the matter, they'll get up. Uh, yeah, listen, I'm glad. I know this morning that my Redeemer lives. He is sovereign. Well, let me move along. Not only is He sovereign over the Son of God, He is the sovereign Son of God. Notice this. He is the supernatural Son of God. As I read in your hearing, He was born of a virgin. Yes, sir. It was prophesied in the Old Testament. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and be with child. And when this had took in place, a Joseph not understanding what uh, that he should do. Uh, the Lord spoke to him. Uh, and I noticed what the last verse, uh, verse 23 says this, uh, and he knew her not uh, until she had brought first forth uh, her firstborn son. Uh, what are you saying, preacher? Uh, uh, he uh, come through a virgin womb. Uh, can I get amen. a amen? amen? Right there. Uh, uh, some of the books they're putting out today, uh, here's what they want to say. They want to take that out. Uh, they want to say she was a young lady or she was a good girl. I imagine she was. But can I tell you she was much more than that. Yeah. And on that blessed day the supernatural a son of God was birthed up to a virgin womb. And it was so exciting that the angels by the multitude said glory to God in the highest peace on earth and good will toward men. Alright let's move along. I'm a man of the word. I keep you posted. Hold your hand up when I got five minutes and I'll hurry on. What are you saying? He's not on there. The supernatural Son of God, but He is the sinless Son of God. Amen. Peter said in Him was no sin. 1 Peter 2.22 And in Him was the no guile. He never committed a sin. He's different than you and I. He was born of a woman yet without sin because He had no earthly father of the natural through the blood, but His blood came royal from heaven's throne. Somebody said, the glory right there. Oh, what do you mean, preacher? He is the sinless one. Yes, oh, I'm glad of that. Well, I'd like to be that way. I'll just be honest with you. I'd love to be able to not mess up. I'd love for John not to be able to make a mistake. But see, I fight with this Adamic nature of man. Although my soul is saved, my flesh is yet to be redeemed. And it's a warfare going on. Can I tell you something, folks? Don't be weary in well-doing. A failure is not final if you don't stay there. Somebody, oh, that's the preacher right there. Uh, there ain't a person in this building uh, that hasn't messed up after uh, their salvation experience. Uh, but aren't you glad for the Holy Spirit uh, that keeps a check on us? Uh, and listen, uh, don't move the Holy Spirit and let Him go. Uh, uh, because if you do, it'll get easier and easier to do uh, that which is wrong and the faint voice uh, will get quieter and quieter. Listen, I'm too afraid uh, to even step without Him. I don't want to take another breath without Him. Because you see, His seed remaineth in me. It's not the Spirit that sinneth, but sometimes this flesh is weak and I have to nail it back again and crucify it to the cross. Oh, bless God. God's good this morning. Paul said, I die daily that I may win Christ. Well, I'm getting along now. He is the sinless Son of God. Now, who is He, preacher? Not only is He the sinless Son of God, He is the sacrificial Son of God. Amen. Oh, I like 
this verse right here. Fellas, you ought to put maybe this verse on the screen. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Here's what it said. For He hath made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. Now let me just put that in hillbilly preaching and South Carolina preaching. What does that mean, preacher? That means He became what we were so we can become what He is. <laughs> We need to be less like me and more like him. We need to be less like him and be more like him. Whoa, what do you mean, preacher? He took upon him the sins of the entire world and nailed them to the cross. And bless God, fulfill the law in that. For every sin there must be death. And he died once and for all. How do you know, preacher? Hebrews 9, 24. Through the remainder of that chapter reads like this. For he hath not entered into the holy place made by hand which are the figures of the true who but now into heaven itself and not that he should often appear as the saints of old with the blood of others but now in the end hath he once appeared and have put away sin by the sacrifice of himself who for as it's once appointed I'm the man to die after this of the judgment but I'm glad it didn't stop there but a new set look for him shall he appear a second time without sin unto a salvation what are you saying preacher let me just sum it up in this who is Jesus he's the one and the only one that died for you eternal life. Why would you refuse to go and accept Him and risk your chance of going to hell? Because let me tell you, look up here. I ain't hard to find. If you live this world without the blood of Jesus Christ being applied to your soul, hell will be Amen. your eternal home. Right. I know it ain't popular, but I ain't running for office, and I ain't here to tickle your ears. I come to have revival. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a place to land. He's not only the sacrificial Son of God, but He is the surviving Son of God. What do you mean? The Bible said the women went one day to see the body of Jesus in the tomb where He lay. A stone had been rolled at the door. The seal had been sealed. When they got Something had taken place. Uh, the Lord God of heaven uh, looked down and said, Son, arise. Uh, and blessed God when he got up, uh, the stone rolled back uh, and it shook the heart of the earth. Uh, and Satan fell off his stony bed uh, and he called Pray, do you hold him? Uh, Dad, do you have him? Uh, and they say for three days, uh, uh, we put our hands in his body. Uh, but, Son, uh, Satan, uh, uh, this morning there was nothing we could do. Uh, he is greater than our power. And he and I say it to you this morning. What did you come looking for? What did you come to church this morning for? I believe there's something missing in your soul. I believe that you were interested in the eternity. Or I don't think you'd even be here. But weren't you glad when they got there? Here's what the Bible said. The Bible said, Whom seeketh thou? They said, We seek Jesus. And the angel said, He is not here. Has risen. Oh, I'm saying, preacher, I'm saying he's the surviving Son of God. Yes, he died on the tree. Hebrews 2 9 said he tasted death for all men, was buried in a borrowed tomb. What do you mean a borrowed tomb? Well, if you're only going to stay there a few days, you just need to buy it for the weekend. He said, I have the power to lay down. And I have the power to raise it up again. Yeah, yeah. Now listen to this, and I'm coming down to the end. He is not only the supernatural Son of God. He's not only the sovereign Son of God, the sinless Son of God, the sacrificial Son of God, the surviving Son of God. But here's what's good. He is the saving Son of God. Amen. Amen. Whosoever will come unto Him, He would in no wise cast them out. For God 
so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life everlasting life I like Romans 5 8 but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us Amen. he died How am I doing on time? We doing all right right here? Let me, let me close with this. I'm from Eastern Kentucky originally. Appalachia. Now you've seen the stuff on the TVs, but I want to be honest with you. It ain't all that bad everywhere. And some of it's that bad because they want to be bad. But when I was growing up, we were poor. I mean, we were so poor, we spelled it with five O's. <laughs> but you know the truth of it was, brother, is it Scooby? Yes. The truth of it was, nobody seemingly had much more than anybody else. <laughs> it's kind of it. I mean, you didn't lock your doors because you didn't have nothing anybody wanted. <laughs> And that back then, that's when some of y'all can remember, some of y'all can't. But back then, that's when town was in town. It wasn't spread out all over the county on each, each corner. But it, town was in town. And by the way, you didn't go to town every day. Matter of fact, as a kid, you if you got to go a Saturday or two a month, you, you, you was high step. Because we had what they called general stores. And the mail house, the mail office was right there in the general store. But they, they weren't fancy. They just old wood buildings and had them wood slamming screen doors, you know, had that big screen on it. But you could get what you need there. But every now and then, we get to go down town to the supermarket. Now, our supermarket was called Melvin's IG. It weren't half as big as this sanctuary, but it was a supermarket. Sam Walton would have had a tough time in building that site. <laughs> but here's what I want to refer to. Just outside of those doors, they had double doors, and they were glass. You could see right through. As a matter of fact, the front was glass, <coughs> and you could see through it. But at the front of those doors, there was about a three by five rubber looking mat. And it was amazing. If you stepped on that mat, that door would open all by itself. Amen. Come on, I'm, talking, I'm just a kid. That's amazing. Anymore now, they've got it. Let's go. I just walk up. It sees me and opens. <laughs> but on that store, you and us boys, we boys, you, you'd step on that thing and get it. it you'd jump on it and start opening. Close. Now, what you didn't want to do is get on the wrong side. But if somebody stepped on that mat on the other side, and you on the exit side, that thing pinned you up against the wall and you hurt. <laughs> so you was very cautious about that. But here's what I noticed. Years have gone by. The building is still there, but the mats are gone. But every time I go by, I remember Melvin's IGA. But here's what I want to tell you about that mats and that door. As a young boy, I stood there. And here was the amazing thing about it. The poor people would come, they'd step on that mat, and the door would open. The doctors would come, they'd step on that same mat, and the door would open. The lawyers would come, they'd step on that same mat, and that same door would open. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying it did not matter who stepped on the mat. If they stood on the mat, the door would open and that gave them access into the supermarket. And it did not matter 
what stature you was, you had to go through the same door Amen. and step on the same ground. What are you saying? I'm saying He's the saving Son of God. I promise you this morning, I don't care who you are, where you've been, what you've done. If you'll come and step on the man. <laughs> the supernatural Son of God will open the door because He is the door. And you can get in. I'm going to ask you to get a verse of invitation. I hope I've done all right. Hope I didn't get over too much. Heads are bowed out of the